the 10th edition has brought us some questions already. Is Oaths of Moment too strong? Is the Leviathan box balanced? Has Nick foregone the greater good for digesting all biomass? These answers and more on this episode of 40K in 40 Minutes, Leviathan Part 2. Greetings, fans, and welcome to this, our second episode of Season 5. Today, we pit two boxes of Leviathan against each other in what promises to be a real spectacle. Two Leviathan box sets today that we painted up in a pretty big rush for this game. Tack will be piloting the Ultramarines today. Nick looks to eat some blueberries as he pilots the Leviathan Tyranids into what he hopes is a glorious victory for the hive mind. And today, I get to play the Tyranids. Tyranek is here. If one Screamer Killer could do so much, what about two? So we've literally doubled the box set, and now we're playing with larger sized armies. Nick has got two full boxes of Leviathan. That's 40 Termagants, 10 Barbgaunts, 20 Neurogaunts, six Von Ryan's Leapers, plus two Tyranid Winged Primes. Two each of the Neuro Tyrant, Psychophage, and Screamer Killer. He does only have one Ripper squad just to play spoiler, however, and he's running two squads of Termagants in 10 strong units and one of 20. He's also got his Von Ryan's Leapers as two units. This should be a riot. There's a lot of things that I'm really enjoying about 10th. I'm enjoying the universal basic rules. I'm enjoying just the freshness of having a new addition and starting at ground zero and everyone trying to figure out what their armies do now. Tack has almost a double box of Leviathan. 10 Terminators, 10 Infernus Marines, 10 Stern Guard, two Ballistus Dreads, but only one of each character though. He's also added a squad of heavy intercessors for the Apothecary Biologist to attach to. I wasn't quite able to paint up a full second set of Leviathan. Tack is taking Artificer Armor on his Lieutenant and giving him a two up save. He's also giving his Captain Adept of the Codex and his Apothecary Biologist will get Bolter Discipline. Nick is using Adaptive Biology on his Warlord Winged Prime, giving him a five up and possibly even a four up feel no pain. And his other Prime will have Perfectly Adapted, giving him effectively a free reroll on that unit per turn. Deployment today is a sweeping engagement, long edges with an angle deployment and our mission is vital ground. Players will score two victory points for holding their own objective, five for each no man's land objective they hold, and six for holding their opponent's objective. Secret Intel sees the mission special rule and is a potentially an extra draw for tactical secondaries and a free discard. Both players are choosing tactical secondaries, so they will be drawing objectives as they complete them, and that mission special rule could come in handy. You may have already seen how effective Ulta Moment is. However, in these bigger games, there's going to be a lot more threats coming at you, and we're going to have to see if Ulta Moment is as effective in a bigger game as it is in the small games. I love big games. I love feeling like there's a war going on on the battlefield rather than just a little skirmish, and I'm excited to use all the toys and totally destroy some Terminators. Zach. Nick. We get to play again. And I get to play Tyranids. I get to play a whole bunch of bugs crawling across the table and try to eat you. <laughs> and I'm playing the Space Marines which is my faction anyway. This is closer to a standard 40K sized game. Playing these box sets at the size that they are, but there's a lot of learning with the smaller battle. Yeah. And Oza Moment, for instance, was really powerful. Super powerful. But now that there's way more threats and you can only issue that command or target one of them. It might be less efficient. The Shadow in the Warp is now targeting more units. There's more chance of you to fail Battleshock, so it might be more powerful. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, I'm excited to see. All right, so who's going to deploy the first model and be attacker or defender? Or who chooses? Uh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'd like to see you deploy the first model. So you go ahead and deploy the first model. Crap. Tack has both squads of Terminators with an attached unit, a Librarian in Deep Strike with one squad, and the Captain attached to the other squad. His Apothecary Biologist is attached to his squad of Heavy Intercessors. Nick's got both Wing Primes in Deep Strike, as well as his Ripper Swarm, and his Neuro Tyrants are surrounded by Neurogaunts. We know that these want to camp my home objective, so this is a Heavy Intercessor, and they have a Biologist attached to that unit. I'm going to start with a Neuro Tyrant, and he's going to do similar things and start back here. Um, holding his objective with his unit of protector, Nero Gaunts. Nick is going to play these Tyranids right, because if I know anything about Nick, he's going to be hyper aggressive and he's going to just launch it all at me at the same time. And that's going to suck because there's only so many guns on my side and eventually those Nids are going to hit my line. 
The string guard are going back here because it gives me options. And there is an objective, and this is still an objective game. I'm gonna put a unit of Barb Gaunts, the Barbies, going down right here on this objective here. You're not gonna telegraph anything about your big guys. No, right? not a thing. Since the Tyranids don't have a lot of long range shooting, I'm just gonna set myself at the edge of my deployment zone and be able to either go first and apply a lot of pressure or counteract, get a lot of my guns in range um, to be able to counteract. Second phase is gonna go, let's see, back here. All I know is that I'm gonna keep my Librarian as far away as possible from that second phase. One Ballista Dreadnought does not have the first time newly painted curse, is gonna go there. But one of the unit of 10 Termagants, you know, right here. A squad of Stringer vets are just gonna follow their captain. But I'm gonna put my Starboard Guard Termagants. <laughs> Everyone knows that I really like Dreadnoughts and I'm super happy that I get to feel not one, but two of the Blissist Dreadnoughts. Now I've got my big giant unit of Termagants, mm -hmm. and they're gonna go right here. <laughs> got a lot going on. Here you won't be able to, right? Yep, I'm gonna infiltrate my Leapers forward to try to secure those objectives early, but I wanna be really careful. I don't want them to be able to be flamed or charged first turn. As we saw in the first game, they can get picked up really easily, so I wanna be mindful of that. We're gonna put the other Psychophage right here. Screamer Killer A, this one's labeled Huggy. He's actually gonna go be really bold, right on the line over there. And the other one's gonna be a bit more conservative so you don't kill it turn one. In Deep Strike, I'm gonna put both of my Wing Tyranid Primes. I'm gonna put my unit of Rippers in Deep Strike as well. Um, but the rest, I'm gonna start on the board. Attacks deployed one Inferno Squad centrally and an Inferno Squad wide. His Stern Guard is tighter in near his Dreadnoughts and the Terminators are provided a central cover. That's a solid Marine defense. Nick's got almost too many bugs to fit his deployment zone. Most of his army is centrally deployed, so this should be a real slobber knocker mid-table early. Uh, All right, who goes first? Apparently you. No, oh, no, it's you, you go first. Nice. Good luck, sir. Good luck to you. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by our friends at Art W. They have prepared an epic promotion for the 10th edition, which will surely give you food for thought. Just a little preview, they're gonna give you the Leviathan box for free with your painting commission. But that's not all. You can also enjoy exclusive discounts and gifts included for the new edition. To access this amazing promotion, simply click on the link in the description and sign up to be among the first to find out everything. Visit artwstudio.com, the link is in the description, click on the promotion banner on the website, register on the page, and receive all the updates about the offer. Please note that this campaign will be available for a limited time and is a unique opportunity. I assure you it is something you don't want to miss out on. The places they offer are limited and last time, on Black Friday, they sold out in just three days. Don't wait waste any more time. If you don't want to miss out on this promotion, visit artwstudio.com and register to be one of the lucky ones who will be able to benefit from it. As always, tell them Play On sent you. Nick deployed really well. I really need more targets because of Osa Moment. I really didn't want to go first. I'm going first. What do? Before the game starts, I am going to put down my deployment homers. Start of turn one, sees Tack going first. Both players gain a command point, and Tack draws his secondaries. Now, note he may draw a third because of the mission specific, but he's chosen not to at this time. He's drawn overwhelming force, he's got to kill units on objectives, and secure no man's land. Control two or more objectives in no man's land. With only two in this mission, that's gonna be tough. So I'm going to call Devastator Doctrine right away. The Doctrines are so viable in a Space Marines force. I didn't want to blow one right away, especially with so much stuff hidden. I'm gonna to try to take down one of these Leaper squads, so I'm gonna go into Devastator Doctrine. His Oath of Moment target is going to be the lighter tone Von Ryan's Leapers. Shooting his own stuff first. Tack, thank you for not shooting the ones I painted. That is it for the command phase. We head into the movement phase, and I need to start advancing. I'm gonna to need to do a lot of advancing here uh, in order to get range and line of sight. Movement phase now, immediately tax using his captain's ability rights of battle to use a zero command point strat, and that's gonna allow him to reroll his advance of two into another two. That didn't work, so that's an ability wasted. So unfortunately, I'm just gonna head towards this cover here and set up for uh, next turn. The Heavy Intercessors advance six. That's gonna help them get close. Uh, I'm going to advance the Stern Guard, see where they go. Uh, four, 10. Hills. They will not be able to see the uh, Von Ryan Leapers, so they're just gonna go there. 
Ooh, the Ballista Dread is moving up real close. It looks like Tack's gonna use that as a speed bump to slow Nick down. With its toughness of 12, that's not a bad idea at all. Inferno Squad. As Devastator Doctrine allows for advance and charge, Tack's being very deliberate with how far he moves forward, leaving his lieutenant in place as a further move block. That's a very, very tactical play from our tactical leader, Tack the Ultramarine Tack Tack Tacular. Tackity Tick Tack. Tack Spoon! Stern Guard are going to advance. Five and five. They're moving 12. So they're just gonna... Big death ball in the center there. Yep. That is it for the moving phase. We're going into the shooting phase. Heavy Intercessors, they're all going to take shots at the Leapers, yeah. Heavy Intercessors have lethal and sustained hits thanks to that Apothecary. And those Von Ryan Leapers shrug all but one wound, wow! The Head Leaper has two wounds remaining. So then the Blissus Dreadnought will take its uh, Storm Bolters. It's, uh, it'll use the frag version of the rocket launcher. And the last cannons are all going into the Leapers. Ballista's Dread now opens up on him, and one Leaper down so far, but the rest of the guns should clean him up. Twin Storm Bolter is uh, Twin Linked. Hitting on fours, I hit with everything. But over the moments, get to re-roll. <laughs> there you roll go. three. No AP on threes. All right, so this Leaper is down to two wounds remaining. The, the last, last cannon. cannon. Don't fail it now. Ooh, I need go. four. Took two of the last cannons, but that threat is gone. And sadly, Nick made no feel, no pain rolls. <laughs> I needed a dreadnought to do it, but at least the Osa moment target is gone. But it's one less threat that's going to hit my lines. Two of the Stern Guard go into a Screaming Killer and take it down eight wounds left. It's down to eight wounds. Who cares? Stern Guard vets here are all going to shoot into the Leapers. So I'll start with a Heavy Bolter, which has devastating wounds plus sustained hits. So on fours. Two oh, wounds. Two, if you want. One Leaper's wounded on Nick's other squad, and now that second dread is opening up. I'm going to do your special, which is a split fire. Split fire to victory! Splitting fire now, the frag missiles into the big blob of guns, the last cannon into the Screaming Killer, and the Storm Bolter into the wounded Leapers. So I will start with the uh, Storm Bolter. I'm only going to get two shots. I'm just going to try to kill the one. No joy in the Leapers. One Gaunt goes down, and the last cannon hits the Screamer Killer, but Nick saves. That wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. I did lose one of the units of Leapers. That sucks but I've still got most of my army and very little dead at this point. No charges or fights and no score at the end of the turn. Both players still at one command point. They'll quickly tick up to two as we start next turn two. And then we go to my turn. Nick draws aerial denial. He needs to clean up no man's land, capture enemy outposts. He needs to steal tax home objective and synapse is being handed out now. Barb Gaunt, Screamer Killer, Leapers and that big blob of Termagants. My secondary draw is just as bad as Tax was. This is going to be almost impossible to score this turn. Okay, moving face. I'm going to be aggressive here. I want my Screamer Killers running up and doing something, because otherwise they're just going to get wheeled down and shot eventually. I think everything else is just going to run up. If I can take board control this turn and deny him primary points on his turn too, then I can maybe eke out a bit of a score here and try to whittle down those Space Marines. Nyx decided to play Barrel of Monkeys with his Leapers, but that actually puts them in range of my Inferno Squad, and I'm going to roast them. And Tack overwatches with his Infernus Marines into them for a command point. 12 total. Fours! Oh, you killed the squad! Oh, I killed the squad! I should have taken, I should have, should have done cover. All that work to balance them, and Tack just roasted the heck out of them. Second so. page is gonna skittle over here to, to get a shot onto your dreadnought there. Okay. And then these guns will move up. I'll get some shots of the dreadnought. Why, why not? Barb guns are moving up mm -hmm. to shoot at the stern guard. And the newer tyrant will also move up. Skitter, skitter, skitter. Mm -hmm. Nick advanced the squad of Neurogons to take one no man's land objective, so that should help him scoring next turn. Termagons, she's gonna move straight at you. You'll get a couple flamer shots at them. So we're gonna go into the shooting phase. Psychophage is gonna shoot everything at the dread shot. Psychophage takes a wound off the Ballista's dread, Screamer Killer into the same dread, no damage, but does force a battle shock test. He succeeds. Next Screamer Killer is gonna do the same thing. Second dread, Screamer Killer forces another battle shock test, and he too succeeds. So this unit of Termagants is all gonna fire into the dreadnought there, hitting on fours, and one wound. Okay. I'm okay. 20 man Termagant squad splits fire here due to range. 13 go into the stern guard, six into the dreadnought. Only a wound on the stern guard. Three up armor is for real. Barb guns into stern guard. Four D6 shots. 
Barb Gaunt's into the Stern Guard now. Manage a kill, and they are now disrupted. So minus two to move, advance, and charge. That's huge. Neurotyrant is going to use his second ability, shooting into that Dreadnought. Neurotyrant targets the Dreadnought, nothing. So this unit of Tormagants is going to shoot into those Inferno Squad. Mm -hmm. I have hit you five times. Mm -hmm. I have wounded you once. Ah, uh, three up. Oh, uh, no, you take, take damage. damage. All these Barb Gaunts into those Heavy Intercessors. The last unit of Barb Gaunts go into the Heavy Intercessors, trying to slow them up more than anything. Nick wounds twice and Tack saves thanks to his Heavy Intercessor rule. Gotta love it. But it's time for the charge phase and maybe I can make up for it. Charge phase now, here come the Termagants into the Infernus Marines. No overwatch as Tack use it to kill the Von Ryan Leapers early in the turn, but Nick still fails his roll. This Screamer Killer is now gonna try to charge this Dreadnought. Okay. And you got There we go. There you go. <laughs> Screamer killer. That's number two. Give that's a, Puggles. I have to go around, go around the objective. I have to go marker. around the objective marker. So I, I'm good. With that that. give me a, a little bit of hope. The Termagants make it in as well. Nick's been really smart about his positioning, and that dreadnought is now trapped. That's the charges. Let's mm -hmm. fight. Screamer killer Huggles is going to screamer huggle you. I, I dislike hugs. Screamer Killer goes into the Ballista's Dread and manages five wounds at minus two. Nine damage to the Ballista's Dread, only three wounds left. Let's do that again, but hopefully even better. This Screamer Killer is the same thing against this uh, Brutalis Dreadnought. The second Screamer Killer into the other Dread and only wounds it three times. Two saves, that Dread's at eight wounds remaining. Can six Termagants kill the Dread on three wounds? Nope. And that's it, fight me back. Armored Feet. Tack kills a couple Termagants in return, but not much else. End of battle round one, and we still don't have a score. Neither player drew really good secondaries, but with the mission-specific rule, they'll be able to potentially draw a third one and get a free discard. Got a few tricks on my sleeve. I think I can weather this storm, and if I can, the rest of my army is gonna be in beautiful range to do some excellent damage next round. Going to the command phase, we both gain a command point. Yeah, I'm up to three. You're up to two. I'm up to two. Nick's choosing to use Shadows in the Warp now. Tack is going to have to test a Battleshock test at minus one across the board. That is pretty strong. All right, so Inferno Squad, please don't fail. Uh, that is a seven. Dreadnought. Please not. No, Ooh, that was the Dreadnought a fail. is Battleshocked. I really cannot fail Battleshock, especially on those heavy intercessors. This is a good one. I would like your heavy intercessors to fail Battleshock. Oh no, the heavy intercessors have failed. No objectives for tack this turn. The Lieutenant fails, a Dreadnought fails, the other Dreadnought fails. Tack chooses Oath of Moment on the Screamer Killer on his right flank. He keeps his secondaries this turn as well. That's an interesting choice. Move face now, and he's moved the Lieutenant and the Stern Guard forward. They're gonna move up. Infernus Marines on his left flank are heading to that objective. Nick uses Skulking Horrors on those Gaunts to move them up to D6 inches away. Six! The hell get cl- Oh, interesting. He's gone closer to the objective. I have not one, but two Screamer Killers to deal with. Huggles and Squeezy. And they are both tied up with my Dreadnoughts, and they both have to go down. And I'm gonna just move them in such a way with they're within 12 of them, but out of line of sight from the Barb Gaunts. That one flank looks pretty weak. I think I'm gonna need to do a risky play here with my Librarian and try to knock Nick off of that one flank. Going into the shooting phase, we'll just go this Dreadnought into that uh, Screamer Killer. Nick uses Rapid Regeneration for a command point. He's down to two remaining, and that's gonna give the Screamer Killer a five up feel no pain for the phase. The Dread shoots the Screamer Killer at minus one because he's shooting into combat, strips it down to two wounds remaining. Good thing that Nick used Rapid Regeneration. So you live with two wounds. Woo! The Flamers into your uh, Termagants. 22 strength 5 Flamer shots into 10 Termagants. 15 wounds, down they go. Termi shoot the Neurogons while the Librarian shoots at the Screamer Killer and takes it down to one wound left. One, one wound. wound on this Screamer Killer. The rest of them into the, uh, to the Neurogons. Yeah. Wounding on threes. All right, on sixes. Ooh, the Neurogons are shot off of that objective even before the Assault Cannon shoots. This is where things get a little spicy. I've got a six shot Assault Cannon. The Librarian gives us sustained hits, so there's a chance for yeah. more. Yeah. It comes with devastating wounds. Oh, that's great. But I'm doing majority into that unit, right? Yeah. Which means all of these are going to be wounding yeah. on twos. Bring it on. Neurogons are dead, and it's a lone Neurotyrant now. 
solid shooting face from Tack thus far. What's going to happen here, Nick, is yep. I'm going to split fire. Okay. Interesting choice on the heavy intercessors now. Three go into Barb Gaunts and two and the apothecary into the Screamer Killer. Barb Gaunts take five wounds at AP1. Down goes a Barb Gaunt and one more is wounded. Screamer Killer now, Absolver Pistol, wounds, and Nick re-rolls his failed save with a command point. He's down to one. One more wound. Screamer Killer's alive, but it's eating up Nick's command points. Ballista's Dread is going to fire into the Screamer Killer. Yeah. Ooh, the Oath Screamer Killer takes five wounds from that barely alive Dreadnought. So last cannon's hitting on Please fours. Don't. I can survive this. Wounding on threes. No! You can do it. Yes! Oh, he does it. Looks like Huggles the Screamer Killer is getting hit with a bunch of Storm Bolters. There's no joy and the Assault Cannon fails. Folks, allow me to introduce you to Huggles and Squeezy. Aren't they so cute? Oh, right, the other way. Sorry, this is Huggles and this is Squeezy. Hey, guys. Oh, hello. Ah, I want to hug you and squeeze you. Split firing continues. Three Storm Bolters into the uh, one with one yep. one. The salt cannon, as well as two storm bolters, are going into the scream killer over here. Huggles. Winning on sixes. I need those again. And go again. Uh, nothing. Stern guard now to Huggles. He could be in trouble. Heavy bolter does two wounds to it. Huggles down to three wounds left. And whoa! Two mortals and an O3 roll. Huggles and Squeezy are both down to a single wound remaining. Tons of shots. One wound. Tons of shots. One wound. One wound. You forced my hand. What's the hand that's been forced? Stern guard vets. Heavy bolter. <laughs> ah, split fire, I love it! Second Stern guard squad targets Huggles now. One wound, but oaths, two saves to make, saved. Squeezy getting shot up now. One six and he could drop him. Not a one. They live on a wound. Go, go, Huggles and Squeezy. Okay, so here's a weird interaction. Flamers don't have blast. Their flames are not gonna scorch the, the dreadnought. <laughs> so three of them are in range of this, of Huggles. Yep. So three of them into Huggles. And then one into... And then one into Squeezy. All right. Huggles. This guy doesn't have a feel of pain, so one kills him flat. I can't do anything about him. Don't do one! Oh, it's a two. Oh. All right, uh, and now one into this guy. Six is, here we go. Uh, no. Huggles lives and Squeezy is fine. Yay, Screamer Killers! Ah. Just die already! <laughs> Just die! All right, charge phase. What do you want to do? Terminators charge Squeezy and they're in. Those Turn guard guards. Charging into the Termagants. Okay, they're minus two to their movement scale and minus two to the dice. Yeah. So it's really minus four. They're in. The Lieutenant into the Termagants. Then the Inferno Squad. Base and base, and then he's gonna go there. He's gonna go behind and base uh, the ones in front of him. Fight face now. Terminators are fighting first here using rights of battle, giving them out of the chapter for zero command points. So because tack charge, he's gonna get plus one to wound with Lance. Nick responds with rapid regeneration again. He's out of command points now, but he might save Squeezy. The power fist first. Winning on fours. I got three of them. I have a five up feel no pain. I need to make both of them. You do. First one, yes! Oh, wow! Second one, give it to her! No, it's gone, he dies. However, he has Deadly Demise, he could blow up. It blows up, yes! Oh, no. Deadly Demise blows up and spreads a mortal wound around, but poor, poor Squeezy is dead. All right, so now we got our combats right here. What are you gonna go with first? The Lieutenant into the Termagants kills a couple. Then this is a string guard. Six saves. I actually saved three. Okay, so you did nice. three. So you've killed a total of five so far. And Furnace Marines kill six more, leaving nine in that squad. They're gonna have to test for Battle Shock, but they are in Synapse. So they'll do so on 3D6. That is all of my chargers. So now you get to go. With I go to go with uh, the remaining fights and I'm gonna, of course, go with the Screamer Killer into the Dreadnought. Only two wounds. Oh no, Huggles. Tack saves on fours. And if he saves both, he lives. He does. I am going to kick you for your troubles. Oh. Hitting on fours because I'm damaged. Dreadnought kicks a Screamer Killer in the shins now and hits it four times. Fives to wound, but Oath of Moment gets rerolls, but no wounds. Only five points for Tack that turn for scoring overwhelming force. He sits at two command points to Nick Zero. I'm not actually in a very good spot, but... Pot armor? Tack's turn actually went pretty decently. I, I'm, I'm not feeling like I'm in a great position here. However, I have a really cool trick up my sleeve. 
All right, so at the beginning of my turn, I get a command point. You get a command point. Nick dishing out synapse here from his neuro tyrants. He's only got two to use as the other one's out of position. All right, and then here comes the moment of truth. Do these Termagants, are they battle shocked? Termagants need to test for battle shock and they succeed. However, I don't actually score this yet because the Screamer Killer also has to test, and if it fails, the Screamer Killer plus the one Termagant in range means that you actually take that objective, which is ridiculous. Screamer Killer test now, leadership eight, and he fails. Nick spends his command point on insane bravery. Screamer Killer passes, and Nick is gonna score seven on primary. Now to the movement phase, and unfortunately, I need to abandon this entire half of the board. Nick's doing his best brave, brave Sir Robin impersonation here, and he's running away from those scary Terminators. Nick is really overloading Tack's flank away from those Terminators. However, Assault Doctrine will let Tack advance and charge, and he could potentially still close with Nick on his next turn. Sand. Oh, I got the objective now. Ooh, sneaky deep strike in the back to go for capture enemy outpost. The Winged Prime is in, the Rippers are in, and his Warlord Winged Prime is also in. This could be big! All right, so we're gonna start with the Neuro Tyrant, who's gonna fire everything into that Dreadnought. Neuro Tyrant targeting the Dreadnought, only four shots. He's wounding on sixes, no joy. Psychophage, same target, nothing. All right, so unfortunately, I don't have any range for these Barb Gaunts, but they can shoot at this Lone Operative with two of them. Okay. So, hurrah! Got five, so three hits. Yep. He's, oh, he's he not okay. He takes the damage! He takes the damage! Yay! And a five of Field of Pain. Yeah, he, doesn't he, he doesn't take any damage. This is gonna be awesome. These Termagants are all gonna shoot into this Dreadnought. Okay. Dreadnought tanks a bunch and nothing. Over here, Psychophage, into your Terminators. Terminators take a wound, but they're still standing strong. One Terminator that had two wounds now has one wound. These Barb Gaunts. Four man unit of Barb Gaunts now into those Terminators to try to slow them up and maybe even down one, and he does. More importantly, those Terminators are disrupted. Minus two to their move characteristic and minus two to charging and advancing. This uh, Neuro Tyrant right here is gonna... Mm -hmm. <laughs> two wounds and minus one. I take a wound, so that's two, two damage. damage. Okay. Shooting phase done, into the charge phase. Mm -hmm. Those rippers are gonna try to charge into these stern guard right here. On a nine! Rippers charge the stern guard. That's gonna half the OC of the units are engagement with. That could flip that objective for sure. Reroll winged prime charge coming in for the home objective, and he's in without the reroll. Winged prime warlord now doesn't have a reroll, but he's also in. Hey, you movement! That's how you sink a nine-inch charge. So let's do some fighting. Fight phase now, and the prime with reroll only manages a single wound, and it is saved. You're not gonna interrupt, so I'm gonna go straight to the other tier of prime, and hopefully I can do a little bit better. <laughs> Give me a few this time. Wounded you four times. The Warlord Prime kills a heavy intercessor. The Rippers don't do nothing. Now uh, it goes to ongoing combats. You get to choose the first one. Tax turn, kick of that screamer killer. That's oath. Can he down it? He's done four wounds. Any ones, I, and I have no rerolls and no feel no pain. The first one? Ah! <laughs> no! Why, dice, why? But you do get to explode. Well, maybe. Okay, maybe do I explode? I don't. No. Oh, that was rough. That was very sad. Termagants now have six into the dread. Looks like Nick might be on tilt here. He didn't even scratch paint. These are the Infernus uh, Marines going into the Gaunts. Tack slaps back with the Infernus Marines, smacking a Gaunts, and they're done. I'm consolidating Haunted. towards that objective, and because I can make it there, I can make this move. Stern Guard now, one base of the Rippers down, two are still up. Heavy Intercessors attack back into the Winged Primes, into the non-Warlord, as it does not have a feel no pain, and strips a wound off him. Poffy Gear gets four attacks. All of these, uh... Save one, one goes through. Right. Down to four wounds remaining over there. Okay. That could have been, that could have gone considerably better. What a big, big turn. Nick captures enemy outposts for a whopping eight secondary points, but that's it. 15 to five as we end turn two, but I think he's in some serious trouble as tax got superior board position. So I'm gonna hold on to area denial for now and uh, we'll see what happens next turn, but I managed to score one. Tax drawing secondaries, he draws investigate signals, which he discards, and draws capture any outposts to replace it. Thank you for the mission specific secondary. Looks like he's calling tactical doctrine here, so he's gonna be able to fall back, shoot, and charge. Oaths of Moment is targeting the wounded winged tyrant. Tack is trying to jack up that apothecary biologus to OC9 again. We are in a new edition of the game, which means apothecaries aren't healers, not all of them. And this apothecary biologus wants to kill things. And if it does manage to kill things, it gets OC9. 
and I want to do that. He has two no man's land objectives and his home for 12 on primary jumps him up to a 17-15 lead. They're just going to uh, fall back. Fall back a little bit. Because you're in the tactical doctrine. Because I'm in the tactical doctrine. The Stern Guard are going to walk over here. They're going to look at the other Tyranid Prime in the face. I'm making sure that there is no uh, nothing intervening. So I'm actually going to advance my uh, Terminator squad here. Now they are, because of the Barb special rule, they're minus two to their normal move. So I'm only going to move three. They're also minus two to the advance. Terminators run forward for a stellar zero inches. That allows the Dreadnought to uh, move up. My Lieutenant is going to do Brave Lieutenant things. As you know, he only moves three. Yeah, because he's uh, shocked. And then Stern Guard are going to fall back and face the Rippers. I'm going to advance with the Inferno Squad up top there. And they're going to go f uh, 11 inches. Then I'm just going to advance with the uh, Terminators. On to the objective. On to the objective. It's yours. It's mine. We'll just do the power blasters are going into the Into the Termagants? Yep. And Furnace Marines, here we go. Those poor, poor Termagants. Four ops. Yeah, I saved one. Okay. Dreadnought splits fire. I'll let Tack explain. Last cannons into the barbs. Missile launcher, but it's going to use the frag version. Yeah. Into the Neurogants. Got it. And it's going to take the storm bolters into the Termagants. Thanks, Tack. And uh, two wounds. No AP. I save one, you've killed another. Okay. One, down to three. Okay, so 2d6 plus two. Hitting on fours. So I'm re-rolling the hits. Threes. Four, uh, take on this guy who has cover. No, he's dead. And one survives. You've killed three of them. Okay. Ah! From a 2d6 blast weapon, that's not a lot. Wait, I have six up field of pains. Oh, you do? I save one more. Last cannons. Here. One heavy intercessor. Yeah. And the apothecary are going to shoot at the one wounded Tyranid Prime. Yep. The, the other, other three one. are going to go into the other one. Bring it. So this is going into the one that has the field no pain then, I guess. Heavy intercessor split fire. Tax trying to manage that apothecary to OC9. The absolver pistol into the prime. One wound left. All the certain guard are going to go into the uh that wing tire prime. Yep. Yep. Uh heavy bolter. I save it. He saves it. Fives. The combi weapon. AP1. Uh, that takes the damage, so it's down to three. Uh, no, it doesn't, because oh. I'm on five up. No, takes damage, down to three. Down to three. Uh, heavy bolter from oh. the Sternguard Vets, plus uh, the combi weapon are going to go into the barb gaunts. Two of the uh, bolters will go into the gaunts. Just try to take them out. Got it. Uh, AP0, probably. Save two of them, you killed one. There's two left. Combi weapon into the barb gaunt. And then. Uh, mortal wound. Mortal wound on a six. Nope, comes through. Okay. Take it one wound. And then the heavy bolter. Not a wound. Last thing is the bosses. The seven wound dread is the last one to shoot and there's only one barb gaunt left of that squad. All right, declaring charges. Inferno squad is going to charge into the uh, termagants. Infernus Marines fail their charge into the Termagants, and Nick responds with his Neuro Tyrant. He's out of command points, but a really good shot at hurting that squad and he kills four. That's the most damage I've done in the entire game. <laughs> the Lieutenant, despite being minus two to charge, makes it into the Neurogaunts. The Stern Guard charged back into the Ripper Swarms. I've got to do a multi-charge. Yeah, do a multi-charge. Because a uh, the entire squad needs to go in. Charging both. Charging both. So this is the Apothecary and his friends are charging into both of the, um, the winged Tyranid Primes. I'm going to take my Dreadnought and make a long bomb charge towards your Psychophage. Bring it. The Ballista's Dread charges the Psychophage and fails. Tack rerolls, down to three command points, needs a nine, fails again. Yes, use oh. those command points. That's okay, I've got lots. So the Apothecary and one friend are gonna go into the Tyranid Prime. And then three of the Heavy Intercessors are going to go into the uh, other uh, Wing Prime that has three wounds. Apothecary kills the Tyranid Prime and he doesn't slap back on his four up. Damn. Then the, uh, <laughs> the remaining Heavy Intercessors into the remaining winged Tyranid Prime. And then on these, I'm looking for fives. Heavy intercessors kill the other, Jeebus Nick, but he does get to fight on death because of his special rule, and he wounds, but does not kill one. Stern guard into the Ripper Swarms. 11 six ups to make. Yep. 
and I make none. You've okay. killed them all! Yay, goodbye Ripper Swarms. Then you've got your lieutenant right here into, just... the bar, uh, into the Neurogons. The lieutenant smacks those Neurogons, kills three. And then they'll pile in and fight you back. Okay. Because that's the only unit I have left to fight you with. Mm -hmm. Neurogons do some damage, and the Neuro Tyrant now manages to take a couple wounds off the lieutenant. Tack has managed to secure No Man's Land, and the score is 22 to 15. On to next turn three. Command phase. I'm gonna get a command point, a precious command point. I'm gonna go up to four. In his command phase, Nick draws Tempting Target and no prisoners. He's gonna discard Tempting Target, keeps no prisoners, and gets two victory points for each unit he kills to a maximum of five. Nick's other secondary is Area Denial. I'm gonna hand out Synapse from the Neuro Tyrant. He's gonna hand out one to this unit of Termagants. And the other one's gonna go on to, because Barb Gaunt might run away too. Yep. Battleshock tests all passed. Primary scoring now, Nyx gets two for holding his home objective. It's 17 to 22 in tax favor now. Single Barb Gaunt gonna go for area denial. That should succeed fairly easily. Slowing Tack from gaining his home objective is a bold move here, and smart. He's got to pull out all the tricks to stop Tack from running away with it here. He's still got two big monsters and two smaller ones that can do some serious work. And then the Neuro Tyrant is going to continue to run away. Well, I mean, run and uh, Psychic uh, Smite those. Yeah, he's going to Psychic Smite things. Oh. Psycho Phage! Scatter, 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 scatter. Ooh, Tack overwatches with his Dreadnought. Sure, it hits on sixes, but all of those guns. Down to three command points. I'm going to do crack, I'm going to storm boosters, and I'm going to do the uh, last count. Nope. Sixes. Nope. Now it's going to be the crack missiles. Okay. Oh my! Box scars with the crack missiles, command point reroll, down to two and two five up saves, and he saves them! To the fives! Oh. I got it! Tack's at two command points, Nick at one, but more importantly, no more overwatch for Tack. Let's go into the shooting phase. Okay. In the shooting phase, these two Termagons are gonna shoot at your one lone flamer guy. Two shots. Hit neither. The Neuro Tyrant is gonna shoot into combat to your little guy. The Neuro Tyrant gets 12 shots. Lieutenant has to save a lot and he fails four. He's got eight five up feel no pains, no joy. Down he goes. Two victory points for Nick and a dead lieutenant for Tack. Psychophage is gonna fire everything into Dreadnought, see if I can't kill it. Psychophage is gonna try to down that newly painted Dreadnought, takes it down to two wounds. Barbgon's target three into the lone marine to assure a kill, two into the stern guard, and one wound left, but kills two stern guard. So I'm gonna put the the stern guard are now minus two to their movement and charge and advance and all that stuff. So good. So I've got two two shootings left. Both of these are gonna go into the terminators. Okay. The narrow tyrant kills the terminator and the psycho phase whiffs. Shooting phase done. Mm -hmm. Charge phase. Mm -hmm. Psycho phase charges the dread. He's in. Yeah, bunk. Psycho phase charges two units. That single marine and the dreadnought. Okay. So he's basing both. Termagons hit the infernus marine. Only one infernus and that dreadnought is really hurting. I've left that flank fairly weak, and I might just lose it here. Psychophage splitting attacks, two and two. Dread takes four mortals because of devastating wounds, and wow, Nick finally rolls something to talk about positively. That's fantastic. And he picks up the Infernus with two mortals as well. Well, that's done. Five victory points for Nick for his no prisoner secondary. Okay, then now this Psychophage into this Dreadnought. Psychophage, rerolling number of attacks, seven now, and Nick's out of command points, but only does two mortals into the Dreadnought. It will have to test for Battleshock, though. Dreadnought fights back, manages three wounds. The Psychophage, however, feels no pain. You did a lot in that turn. No prisoners in area denial score Nick 10 secondary points to put him in the lead 27 to 22. Will he go for a gambit or not, as he's quite behind on primary, and Tack definitely has board presence. Gambit time. Will either player attempt a gambit? They'd abandon primary in order to attempt to score 30 primary victory points. Let's see what the guys do. Tack proceeds as planned. Nick chooses delaying tactics. If he can successfully delay Tack, he can score 30 primary. He's going to need to have him engaged with four units at the end of turn five. And then roll four ups. It's hard, but it could guarantee a victory. It, it may not tactically be the smartest thing to do, but I really want to try it. I want to see how it works. It's a much closer game than the board state shows. Yes, I've got a lot more units, but they're out of position. Tack spends a command point and adaptive strategy to put the Dreadnought into Tactical Doctrine, and he's down to two remaining. He has Area Denial and Tempting Target as his two current secondaries. He's going to put Oath a Moment on the Psycho Phase that's on his right side. All his Battleshock tests are passed, and he scores seven on primary to make our score 29-27 his favor. So the Dreadnought can move over them. 
land there. tax has got to be very cagey with his movement here. He needs to smash the bugs now or get the heck away from them and stop Nick from scoring his delaying tactics. So they're going to just move up like this, like so. And you're going to move back through your Terminators? I'm going to move back through the Terminators. Here comes the Inferno Squad, burninating the countryside. Here now. Nick spans a command point to overwatch those Infernus Marines, and he kills three of them. Going to the, the shooting phase? I'll just take those two and fire into the Neural Tyrant. Right here. Oh. Got it. Shooting phase, Infernus into the Neural Tyrant, and no joy. Trying to off that lone barb gun now, as well as the Psychophage, so Tack's going to be splitting fire here. Psychophage takes the moons, but a five-up feel no pain is a thing. Wow. Oh, the barb gun goes down. That's going to get him area denial. Then the Terminators... Uh, over there are going to put everything that they have into the uh, Psychophage. Shit. So the Assault Cannons first. Yep. And then wounding on uh, fives. Storm Bolters. And then I need sixes. Uh, one. Save it. Heavy Intercessors are going to go into the Psychophage. Try to take that objective away, but not having any luck here. Seven wounds remaining on this Psychophage. The Combi Weapon will go into the Termagants. The Heavy Bolter will go into the Psychophage. Got it. Combi Weapon. Uh, both miss. Heavy Bolter. We're rolling because that's my ultimate moment. Fishing for sixes. I got one six and one wound. Okay. Four field of pains. I save one of them, taking three damage, down okay. to seven. Down to seven with this guy as well. Both of them are down to seven. Six shots from the Stern Guard Vets are going into Termagomps, and then the Heavy Vulture and the Combi Weapon into the Sacrifice. And then winning on threes. Save it. Heavy Vulture. We're rolling because of the moment, they all hit. And then needing, uh, there is one six in there. One wound, but I'm going to just fish for sixes. Uh, nice. Two. Feel the pains? I saved two of them. Two sixes, Trip. so I pass two of them. Two of them go through. Trip. On to five wounds remaining with that cycle fish. Trip. Then the, the combi, try with this. Uh, then do I wound? Uh, that is a mortal wound. Okay, on a five up. I do not save it. Let's so take another one. Down to four. Uh, storm bolters and the frag will go in, into them, and then the last cannon will go into the uh, second page. Dread now, command reroll to reroll the damage. Only two damage, two wounds left, and one command point remaining. The Termagons are about to evaporate, and they do. So declaring charges. So the Terminators will charge into the cycle phase that has seven wounds remaining. Terminators charge mid table. That's the unit with the captain. Stern guard charge into the Oaths of Moment cycle phase. Spending a command point on honor the chapter. That's going to give Stern guard weapons lance, giving them plus one to wound. It takes the cycle phase down to a single wound, and he's out of command points. So it's down to one wound. Ah, uh, I tried. I tried. Terminators get to use the same stratagem for free because of the captain's rights of battle. Plus one to wound is super strong. Psychophage at five wounds mid table. Captain L also wounds on fours. Nick feels no pains, but he's down to one wound on the psychophage. What the actual heck? Both psychophages are down to a single wound. So let me introduce you to Huggles part two and Squeezy part two. Isn't this great? <laughs> History repeats itself and it's awesome. Wow. <laughs> and now I get to put you back. Yes. The Stern Guard take three wounds at minus one. No! Nick pops the Stern Guard. Second cycle phase gets seven attacks and only one wounded Terminator. I, I maybe shouldn't have gambited. I'm surprised how well I did. Because of all this, no scoring for tack that turn. It's 29-27. Nick's turn four. No primary for Nick, as he's gone for the gambit, but he does draw Investigate Signals and Overwhelming Force. He spends his command point on new orders, and that's going to give him Extend Battle Lines. Synapse for Nick hands it out now. He's in Synapse, so he'll get that. Yeah. And he's going to hand out a Synapse token to the Psychophage. Sure. And might as well hand out a, a, a token to the Barb Gaunts here. And then token on the Psychophage. Not I don't primary. score primary. I hope that wasn't a mistake. Let's find out. 29-27 in favor of Tack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fall back with the, the Psycho Fish, running back as fast as it goes. Mm. Nero Tyrant, it's gonna hide behind this wall and stare at you. Psycho Fage bravely runs away. 
Neuro Tyrant and Retinue move up to take that objective that he just abandoned with the Psycho Phage. And then we're going to the shooting phase. Barb Gaunt's first into these Terminators. Barb Gaunt's into the Captain and his Terminators, slowing them down as much as he can, manages a dead Terminator, but more importantly, those Terminators are disrupted and will be slow. Neuro Tyrant is gonna go Neuro Tyrant now psychically blasts the Terminators. Storm Boulder? Yep. Down to one. I'm not gonna bother charging you, but I did manage to score. Nick does score extend battle lines this turn. That takes him to 32 points to tax 29 as we head into tax turn five. What a tight game. All right, so turn five, Tack. I may only pull out a win here because Nick took a gambit and that allows me to focus down one of his units, kill it, and if I do so, he won't be able to score that gambit. Tack draws a new secondary thanks to the mission specific. He gets Defend Stronghold. Tack scores seven primary and chooses Assault Doctor now as it's the only one he's got left. He Oath of Moments on the Neuro Tyrant in front of Nick and his Dread and Infernus fail the Battle Shock test. So Tack is only going to score seven on primary to take us to 36 to 32. So then movement here is incredibly important. As you do that movement, I'm going to spend a command point on Overwatch. Yeah. Nerf Tyrant overwatching the Terminators out of command points, but he kills another one. The Stern Guard are now wholly within six of the middle for airy denial, and if he kills that Psychophage, he'll own that secondary. So going into the shooting phase now, I will just uh, fire uh, flamers into the um, into the Neuro Tyrant. Neuro Tyrant. Infernus Marines into the Neuro Tyrant, oaths a moment reroll, only one damage. The Librarian Squad, I think the only thing they can see is probably the Neuro Tyrant. Assault Cannon now into the Neuro Tyrant, everything else of the Cycle Phage, and down it goes. Assault Cannon now is going into the Neuro Tyrant. We roll the one and the two because that is my oath moment target. Uh, still fail, so I only got four hits. Fives. Uh, re rolling because of oath the moment. Uh, one. Okay, down to seven wounds on this guy. Here. Uh, Dreadnought will now fire into the Neuro Tyrant. Ballista's Dread is going to try down that Neuro Tyrant. Last cannon fails to wound. Crack Missile, Storm Balls will is tanking it all, but the Assault Cannon does four modal wounds. Three wounds remaining. Okay. Wow, well done. Uh, Storm Bolters. Wounding on sixes. One so far. Uh, two. Uh, no AP. Save one, one goes through. Down to two wounds remaining on the Neuro Tyrant. Heavy Intercessors. Heavy Intercessors. I reroll my two fails because it's my oath moment target <laughs> on fives. I think this is the difference between an oath moment. Two wounds left on the Neuro Tyrant. If he dies, Nick cannot score his gambit. Wounds, he fails. <laughs> you? You've killed him. Really, on yep. that? On that. On long bomb on shots. That. And that actually seals the game for you. Attack scores three on defense stronghold, five on air denial to take him to 44 points. And that is going to end the game as Nick cannot possibly score enough secondary points and will not be able to score his gambit. 54 to 42 is your final. If Nick had stayed with primary, he would have potentially won this by two points at minimum. What an absolute slobber knocker of a game. At no time was the outcome certain and player choice had everything to do with who won. As a player, you gotta love that. Thank you, Tack and Nick, for a fantastic showcase of what this early 10th edition looks like. And thank you to this episode's sponsor, Art W. Don't forget, they're giving away Leviathan boxes for a limited time with your commission order. Follow the link below for details. Also, a big thank you to you for watching. We really can't do this without you, so thank you for being here. If you like what we do, please consider supporting us through YouTube membership or Patreon. You'll get exclusive releases as well as behind the scenes interviews, early access to most of our shows, and access to our Discord, the most happening 40K community around. That's it, that's all folks. On behalf of all of us here at Play On, this is your host, JT McDowell saying, until the next time you see us in the far-flung future of a grimdark universe, Play On. I'm really enjoying 10th. I'm enjoying the, str uh, the I'm enjoying the challenge of figuring out this brand new game and how it works. It was a lot of fun putting two Leviathan box sets together and just playing a larger game and again learning what these armies do in the new 40k.